In this video, I'm showing you how to put a pumpkin on your head, because who wouldn't want to do that? Do you also like to spook your friends during Halloween with something like super freaking scary? Like this? Ooh, did that scare you? Hell yeah, it did. This is probably the scariest thing you have ever seen and I'm showing you exactly how to make it. And instead of carving out an actual pumpkin and put it on your head, we're gonna do this the easy peasy way by using Photoshop. Some things you should already know before doing this tutorial is basics about how to use layer masks, adjustment layers and smart filters. So, take a picture of yourself, your brother, sister, mom, dad, grandparents or dog or cat or I don't care, just take the bloody picture and drop it in the magical world of Photoshop. I'm lazy so I just grabbed this picture from Pexels. If you want to do it with this one, the link is in the description. As usual, use whatever tool you like to cut yourself out. Except if you want to keep the background, obviously. Then refine your mask by double clicking on the mask. This brings you to a new workspace where you can adjust the edge of your mask with all these handy tools. I could explain what they all do, but just try them out for yourself. When done, drop in an image of a pumpkin. If I was really lazy, I would just find one with a face, but I'm gonna show you how to add your own face to it. No, not like that. I... You, you know what I mean. Unless you have a transparent image, you're gonna need to cut it out. When you finish that, make sure to convert it into a smart object, because we're gonna add another mask to it later. Now add a new exposure adjustment layer and clip it with the subject. Bring down the exposure slider, invert the mask and start painting a shadow under the pumpkin. The light in this image comes from the left side so keep that in mind too. You should now add another exposure adjustment layer but this time clip it with the pumpkin. You wanna do the exact same thing here. You should also add another shadow to the subject but this time a very dark one. You can do the same thing as before, an exposure adjustment layer. Now you wanna tweak the adjustment layers to get the best result for your image. For the pumpkin, you should add a very dark shadow too, by the way. To match the shadows with the overall lighting, I use the first exposure adjustment layer to darken the back of the subject. If you're using your own image, this might not be necessary. The pumpkin looks like shit. To fix the colors and lightness, you can add smart filters like brightness and contrast, vibrance, levels and color balance. Okay, so to be able to see, we need a face. For this, you could either find a face online or make your own. Online, you can search for pumpkin faces and a whole bunch show up. If you're drawing it yourself, you can either make a new empty layer and paint on it with a brush or use the pencil for shapes. When you're done though, you should make sure it's black and inside a smart object. Sorry for the weird order of doing things, but you should probably change the dimensions of your artboard because who in the world wants it to look like this? <laughs> this is the face I found and I just did real quick. Now we have to make sure it matches the shape of the pumpkin. Position, scale and rotate it to put it in the right place. Then hit Ctrl T or free transform, right click and select warp. Now you can freely change the shape of the face. When you're done, hit enter and boom. Perfect, we're done. No, just kidding, we're not. This face needs to be carved out of the pumpkin instead of just being painted on it. It also needs to be lit from inside. So to do that, we first need this to be very bright. AKA, we gotta add a new yellow solid color and clip it to our face. We now need to add an edge because the skin of a pumpkin isn't as flat as a piece of paper. This next part is tricky. You gotta duplicate the original face and put it above the solid color and clip it. Now it should be black again. So now hit Ctrl T or free transform and hold Alt. While doing that you can see a little icon pop up next to your cursor. This means that if you would click while holding Alt, that's gonna be the new anchor point of your image. Which means this is the point it spins around. So hold Alt and click in the middle of the pumpkin. So not the face, the pumpkin. Just look at the pumpkin and try to determine where the middle is. The reason we do this is because when you carve a pumpkin, you carve straight into it. Or well, you're supposed to do that at least. But this means the vanishing point is in the center of the pumpkin. When you've clicked, you can now scale down the face and you'll see it doesn't scale centered, but a bit to the right. That's exactly what we want. Scale it down a bit and hit enter. You can now kinda see the 3D effect coming to life here, but it's not quite there yet. You need to remove the parts of the black in between the two identical parts of the black one and the original face. Okay, honestly, I wouldn't understand that if you told me, but I'll just show you. 
These two points are the same, except in different images, so you need to remove this part. You can do this by adding a layer mask to the black face on top. Now you just have to connect every point and remove the stuff in between. Now you should clip an exposure adjustment layer on top to add some contrast to it, because right now it's just one color on the sides. Set its blend mode to luminosity and bring down exposure a bit. Now start painting on these areas. Now, before we're gonna fix that black area, let's explore some fun facts about Halloween. According to Irish legend, Jack o' Lanterns are named after a sticky man named Jack who, because he tricked the devil several times, was forbidden entrance into both heaven and hell. He was condemned to wander the earth, waving his lantern to lead people away from their paths. <clears throat> and did you know that in medieval Europe, owls were thought to be witches, and to hear an owl's call meant someone was about to die? And black and orange are typically associated with Halloween, but why? I mean, obviously, a pumpkin is orange, but orange is also a symbol of strength and endurance. Black is typically a symbol of death and darkness and acts as a reminder that Halloween once was a festival that marked the boundaries between life and death. And Halloween hasn't always been called Halloween. It's been variously called All Hallows Eve, Witch's Night, Lamb's Wool, Snap Apple Night, Sound, and Summer's End. Isn't that spooky? Hell yeah it is. Okay, so let's get back to the video. So, now it's dark inside, which is not so great. So to fix that, you can double click on the black face and check color overlay. Change its color and use the eyedropper tool to use the same light color we already used. Hit OK and change the color of the solid to something slightly darker. This is where it's starting to look pretty good. However, now you might see some weird stuff going on. That's the exposure adjustment layer affecting the second face layer. Simply move the exposure adjustment layer down. We need some detail in the cut of the pumpkin. So double click on the solid colors layer and click pattern overlay. Select a nice pattern, probably this one would be best, and set its blend mode to overlay. You can now decrease the opacity for the best result. When you're done, you can hit OK and maybe change the solid colors color again for something a bit lighter or darker or more vibrant or whatever you want. Now we're at that point where you can change all your masks, effects, values, pretty much everything to get the ultimate result. For a very small detail you could even make an empty layer, set its blend mode to soft light, decrease its opacity to 50% and paint with a very small white brush on the edges of the carved out areas. Then I added a simple background, added a moon to it, brightened it up and grouped the subject layers. To that group I clipped an exposure adjustment layer and brought down exposure. To make sure the face doesn't lose its brightness, you can bring the exposure adjustment layer down under the face layers. Then you could also make the color more blue or purple by using a hue and saturation adjustment layer and decreasing the opacity. Now let's name and group our bloody layers because this is, this is getting out of hand. Now, we obviously need some highlights, but before that, you first need that moon to glow. And if you don't know how to do that, I did this by using a white solid color and painting a very soft circle with a brush. Also, the blend mode you can set to screen and finally erase some areas in the center to get some detail back on the moon. Now the highlights. I have a detailed video on how to create highlights. If you want to see that, it's in the description of this video or click in the right corner. Make a new UN saturation adjustment layer and clip it with the subject group. Hit the colorize checkbox and make it super bright. Make it a bit bluish because the background is bluish too, purplish, whatever. Then invert the mask and paint with a soft brush around the edges on the subject. And not just the layer edges, but all the edges. You can easily switch between show and hide by hitting X. For the bloom effect you can do the exact same thing, but this time only the areas in front of the moon and way less detailed. And maybe decrease the opacity for this one. For the pumpkin glow you can make a new orange solid color, set its blend mode to screen, decrease the flow of your brush and paint very softly on the eyes and mouth. Afterwards you can change the color of this solid. What I like to do to stylize my edits is some smoke or dust or mist or whatever it is in the background. For this you can add another solid color and paint on it with a mist or smoke brush. If you don't have those, you suck. No you don't. Just get some from Brushizi or spend some money on some really good ones. Then just 
kinda do your thing with them. You could even add some smoke coming from the eyes the same way with the solid color and smoke brushes. And maybe add some bats. Right, so I guess it's time again for a camera raw filter. Group everything, duplicate that group, merge it, hit Ctrl A, then Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to remove the stuff outside the eyeboard and convert it into a smart object. Then go to filter and choose camera raw filter. As usual, this part is completely up to you. Just tweak everything and see what everything does. This way you actually learn it instead of just copying like a robot. I myself removed the smoke from his eyes because I didn't really like it, but of course that's all up to you. Well, now, uh, yeah, now you know how to put a pumpkin on your head. Nice. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment. And if you enjoy my content, feel free to subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Then I hope I will see you in my next video.